Now what's the secrets that every day we go around in a bima, in a shul, seven times? Oh, shana. What's all this? This is what they used to do in Bet HaMikdash around the altar. The altar in Bet HaMikdash. And they go with their lulavim around Bet HaMikdash. Inside Bet HaMikdash, shaking the lulav, all days, is, all week is the oraita from the Torah. Here, only first day. That's why if you have an etrog, and the top, the pitam, broke, if it broke in the first day, you must find a new etrog. But if it broke the second day and on, you can go, you continue with this like this. Why? Right? From, the, from the second day to the end, is already the Rabbanan. It's not pasul. But for the first day from the Torah, you must have it. That's why we only say Shechianu in the first day also. Because every day it's a separate mitzvah. Every day you make a separate bracha. Shechianu only in the first day. Then, the Torah says like this. Chak Sukkot ta'aselecha shivat yamim. Make yourself the holiday of Sukkot for seven days. Be'osfecha migornecha u'mi'ikvecha. When do you do Sukkot? After the entire year you work very hard. Almost everyone was a farmer. Everyone. So everyone has field. This guy is growing wheat. This one is barley. This one is corn. This one. Everyone has fruit and vegetables. So all... Here, you took care of the, you plow in the ground, you put the seed, you give water, whatever you do. When is the holiday that you pick everything into container? Sukkot. You feel the cash in your hand. You know, I used to have a boss 20 years ago. It was like this, like a barrel, <laughs> you know. Yeah, as a Jew, that I don't even find goyim like him, let's put it that way. Eating ham, eating this, cheating, lying. He had this big gingy mustache, tons of hair, huge. You don't know him, he's already left the world a long time ago. And he used to come to me like this, with a sandwich of ham and cheese. You want some? Delicious. Come, taste this. So I say to him, listen, you're going to continue like this until Hashem will get angry at you and will shock you and then we'll see what you have to say. Three weeks later, he, got, he, got, he died. Three weeks later, he died. But before he died, all day was standing in a big restaurant, bagel store, like this. I never forget this image. It's a pile of cash. It was very busy, very, very busy store in Great Neck. Big, massive bagel store. You go like this. All day like this. All day like his hands like this. Piles of cash. And I was thinking to myself, this Rasha, all day counting cash, and I don't have money to put in a payphone. He used to go to call to Israel, you need three and a half dollars in quarters. As soon as you finish putting all the quarters, you have one minute left. <laughs> used to be expensive. And he's like this all day. Like this until, you know. He died 40, 42 years old, that's it. That's like what the Torah says, karet, the physical karet. That he, amav ya'azvenu. So the people, after Sukkot, they're also like this. Wow, psh, piles of wheat. Now business, finally. Now it's, now it's the season. Rabbi, it's the season now. Can I put the go in my boot? No, it's Shabbat, but it's the season now. The season. So Hashem say, yes, I know it's the season. Now you finally became rich. You're going to sell a hundred tons of wheat, barley. You become, you make fortune. Leave your beautiful palace and go sit in a little bootke in a sukkah. Rain, heat, you sit in a sukkah. Lower your pride right away. When people make a lot of money, they feel, ah, I'm independent finally. My future is secure. How many people in America three years ago thought that their future is secure until, not only until the Mashiach will arrive, until they finish building the third temple, I have enough cash. For me, my children, my grandchildren, three, four months, they lost everything. This bad investment here, there. Nobody knows what's going to be. 
if people think in this country, if they put a few million dollars on saving, that that's going to save them, they are wrong. And I want you to know now, almost every man had a robbery in New York. And really serious robberies with knives, with guns. They're robbing kids, not only adults, kids. You send your son to the store to buy something. One of the people see them. And as soon as they come out, they come to them, give me the money. What's the kid going to do? He's afraid. You see two gorillas standing there. And they take away everything. They rob everyone. And they're not afraid. And I'm telling you, they're robbing people in the afternoon when the streets are very busy. Even the police is one block away, they're not afraid. And I say that a few months ago, that they have nothing to lose. Some of them say, I wish they catch me. At least I'm going to have my television and air condition and heat in jail. And I, all the bodies from the neighborhood, we, reunion. Very good, ma. No, I don't need health insurance. Don't need problem. Doctors take care of me. I have great bed. What's the basketball as much as I want all day like this? Big screens. He cannot afford it in his life. So he has nothing to lose. It's a no-lose situation. If he rob you, he now have $1,000. If he got caught, also hotel. For him, it's hotel. He doesn't have it at home. It's a very dangerous situation.